Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson and welcome to one of my video lessons. Now today's video tutorial for you is how to paint a koala bear. This is the one in question. As you can see, it's quite a nice character, isn't it? And quite a nice pose as well. Now the first thing we need to do is get the outline drawing onto the paper. Now if you know me well enough, you know I tend to use a graphite back paper, which is the shiny stuff here. There's always a shiny side down. You slide it underneath, like that, and simply trace around the image. Oh, that's simple. Um, but all I've done with this one, I've gone around the main outside edge of the koala. As you can see, all the way around there. But nothing on the middle of that, nothing on the inside just yet. And I've also got a ruler, I've gone around the edge of this as well, to kind of mark out the edge of that. And when you've transferred that through, what you'll have then, take a look, is something like that there. Once we've done that, then we need to think about applying some masking fluid. The masking fluid, I want to go probably about maybe a quarter of an inch, just inside the edge itself, that's all you need to do. Nothing more than that, really. And when you apply masking fluid, don't put it on too thickly, because if you do, later on when you try to remove it, it might be harder to remove. That's what I tend to find anyway. So put it on nice and thin, something like that. That's not too bad there, look. Now when you get to the furry bits, which is most of the areas, <laughs> Just do a small area like that. Grab your cocktail stick, and then flick out those hairs. I want the background to be, well, more or less quite a dark colour because of the fact that when you look at that fur, it's very pale, isn't it? There's a lot of white in the fur. Lightest colour first. A little bit of yellow around there. There is yellow there, as you can see. But again, we're not trying to make it exactly the same. We're not too fussed about that. A little bit of our green colour. The sap green and the lemon yellow. Just down one side there, look. Now it's a blend as well. It could blend on the paper. Remember, we need that contrast, don't we? Without the contrast, it won't work. Then give it a tickle. Then add other colours into the mix as well. Same colours, but just different variations of those colours. But I do want that background to have a variety of colours within it as well. Just by just dropping in a few different colours here and there. Again, I'll show you how to do all of that. Eyes. Now the eyes are very tiny, aren't they? And you've got to think about the shape of the eyes. They're not completely round, are they? So because of that, you've got to look carefully at the shape of that initially. Now the wet and wet wash, as you can see, are very pale, very light. So that's going to be the first layer on there. Then once that's dry, then we've got to think about adding the detail around the eyes. So in other words, darker colours. A bit of a straight line in that area there. Too much paint on the brush there, really, to be honest. I need the finest of lines here. The finest of lines just to make sure there's not too thick this outside edge. So it comes down a bit of an angle there, so it's not, as I said, round or oval. Like a flattened egg, really, but slightly at that sort of angle. Clean brush and give this a twiddle and start to blend it. Notice as well, there's a bit of a lighter spot on this right-hand side of this eye. It's going to ensure and maintain that area there. If you don't, don't worry, once it's dry, you can lift off a little bit of paint. So add a tiny amount of highlights where you think it's needed, but not much. A little bit round there. That's nearly it. Just touch around there as well. That's one eye. <laughs> if you reserve the white of the paper, that's fine. Just a hint there, just a hint there. We want to make those eyes look 3D. We want to make those eyes stand out. We want to make those eyes look alive. And by taking your time with it, you can get it right. Now painting something like this is really good fun, isn't it? Especially when it's a wildlife subject. Now I've got well over 150 other watercolour wildlife subjects on my Patreon channel. I go through every single video right from the start all the way through to the end for you, show you how to do them as well. So if you fancy being sport for choice when looking for a wildlife subject to paint, have a look at the link in the description down below for my Patreon channel. Hopefully I'll see you there. Now I mentioned in the fur, You've got to think about the colours initially. I'm going to start off by using very pale details first of all, so more of a watery kind of consistency really. Then I'm going to get some of our dark colour. The Burnt Sienna and Lamp Black. I'll put that in there. Burnt Sienna. A Lizarine Crimson, probably even too much on that one, we'll see. And then our dark colour. That Burnt Sienna and Lamp Black. Put that in there to dulling it down. That's looking better. Just using tiny little stipple marks to begin with. Very tiny marks. 
It's around there. Now we know, when you look closely at that photograph, that the nostril, or the side of the nostril, comes down to about here. Sort of curls in. And goes around the other side there. Yeah, something like that, isn't it? So load it, make sure there's not too much on the brush. I'm going to start around the eye, probably this left eye here, that'll do. Just by adding in the tiny, tiny details I can see there. And I mean tiny details, aren't they? They really are. And then, oh, a bit more paint's grey in there, actually. Yeah, a bit too blue. And then look at the direction these go out as well. Don't worry about the white. We'll be adding white over the top of that. Quite a lot of white in places. <laughs> and when you look at the pale details, you've got to think about all the little lines and the direction of the little lines as you work around from the eye, building your way up towards the top of the head. And then when you get to the top of the head, you start working your way back down again for the rest of the face. Look at the way that the pattern goes as well, the direction of the fur down here. Actually, I can see more like a herringbone style down here, can't you? So it's like a big V coming all the way down, but overlapping as well in places, so all these overlap. We need to remember when you're working with anything like this, I do not normally say this in the majority of my videos, I know, but think about not having the lines too parallel with one another like that. Crisscross them, elongated crosses like so. Okay, and that's what I tend to do when I'm working with fur, or feathers even, to a certain degree. Let's make a start around the eyes. So again, lower the brush, but don't have too much on that brush. Take most of that paint off again. I'm going to start adding just a few tiny details, not much. Just above the eyes, look at the direction these go in again. I'll keep going on about that, but it's so important. Tiny amounts of paint, that's all I'm using, look, you can barely see it. Overlapping, still sort of aiming that way, aren't they? Until you get down here. But through those details, you can do this. Okay, you can. And this will help all the detail work, which we'll put over the top of this later on. So remember, start off with a watery consistency initially, and with every subsequent layer thereafter, you can gradually thicken that paint a little bit more. So from watery to milky to creamy. Mm, should we go thick? Probably not. Then you've got to think about painting the branches. So we need to think about doing if there's too much paint on the paper, just very lightly lift some off. And all I do, just tap my brush on some kitchen roll first of all, just to remove some of the paint. Just allow the brush to soak some of that paint back up off that watercolour paper. And that will in turn lighten it down a little bit as well. Believe it or not, there's quite a lot of detail in those branches. You've also got to think about the basic wetting wet washes first of all on them. Because you've got to try and keep them nice and pale in tonal values on there. And then we'll go to our darkest colour, a bit of a 50-50 mix, and that's more of a milky consistency. And I'm barely kind of touching the paper, literally just skimming over the top of the surface here. I give it a very, very light soften, but be careful when you do this. Because it's that really dark colour, it will bleed quite a lot, so you don't want to blend that really. So there you are, that's how to paint a koala in watercolour. Now this is only the shortened version you watched today. I've got many hours of footage on how I painted this one, and it's all on, as you know, on my Patreon channel. So if you fancy having a go at painting this one in full, in real time audio as well, alongside over 150 other video lessons, have a look at the link down below. Now, other than that, stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to paint fur in watercolour. Have a look at the video, just top right hand corner there. I'll see you there.